Hello, Parallel Church. Thank you all so much for joining in with us today. I am Carson. And I'm Anthony, and we are so excited to join you for our 1115 service. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for our new series. New uh, series. Yeah, so it's on parenting. It's called Parenting. It Takes a Village. Yep. And That's we... Uh, I was trying to think of the name. Yeah. I was like, wait, what was what it was again? the name? It's not just Parenting. Yeah, so. Parenting, It Takes a Village. Yeah. And so if you are new here, we mm -hmm. would love to get to know you a little bit. So we're going to have our host post a link in the chat. Mm, and post if you post. wanted to... <laughs> you wanted to fill that out we would love to connect with you yes absolutely and if you are new as well or just joining in we'd love if you guys could just engage in the in the service we'd love if you just say hi in the chat again our amazing host team would love to, yeah, to chat it up with you mm -hmm. and also we'd love if you guys could share this service there's so many people out there that would need uh the service today it's it's amazing we've already got a sneak peek of it from mm -hmm. the first service uh so definitely share this uh and yeah all yeah. those parents all those non-parents everyone this is a very helpful mm -hmm. very helpful message yeah yeah pastors tim and jen did a phenomenal job mm -hmm. and i can't wait to hear what they have this time so we also speaking of parenting have mm -hmm. a giveaway and so there's going to be a link in the parallel online campus so that'll go up later today and so it's this book here, Parenting. Yep. Um, and it's by Andy Stanley. Yep, Andy I haven't, Sandra Stanley. Yeah. I haven't personally read it, but I have heard nothing but good things from the parents I know that have read it. Um, so yeah, if you are a parent or you're about to be a parent and you want mm -hmm. to have a great resource, make sure to enter that. So join the online campus, and when that link goes up, be sure to fill out that form. Yeah, so yeah, go to the, the Facebook Parallel Online Campus group. And then link will be up. Uh, so click that link, fill it out. Uh, but also on our Facebook Parallel Online Campus group, there are things that happen throughout the week. So it's not just a Sunday thing, but uh, continuing on throughout the week. So on Tuesdays, we have our online prayer night. Uh, and so this is where Anthony uh, or Pastor Tim will go live. Uh, and we just have like a group of people coming together, kind of just praying. Uh, and, and yeah, right? Like as the, the series is called, right? It takes a village. It's nice to have a bunch of people coming together. Um, being able to uh, to pray for some situations and and yeah on Wednesday we have our online house party if you've not joined a house party you're gonna want to do so it's a great way to connect with people to to grow to just to hang out as well uh, and just a lot of fun uh, and that that's happening there's people all over the world joining that mm -hmm. one so that's a, a lot of fun uh, and so it does not matter where you are in the world uh, it is 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time We'd love if you guys could be there. And then finally, Thursday, this is a Parallel Leaders Day. It's usually Pastor Tim or at Pastor Anthony. Again, just bring in a teaching, uh, and it's an amazing, amazing time. Grow, get better, mm -hmm. have fun. Yeah. yeah, we'd love to see you at any of those things. And we also have something for your kids. Mm -hmm. So if you go to parallelchurch.com and go to our family section, yep. our kids team has made a great video for you guys. And they have lots of fun making it. I'm sure your kids will have a lot of fun watching it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And so as we jump into this new series, guys, make sure you get your notepads out. Each and every Sunday, each and every week is going to be a, an amazing uh, new life-giving uh, message. Uh, and so, yeah, make sure you got your notepads ready because today, starting it off, it's already been super, super mm -hmm. good. Um, but we are just about to head into the service ourselves uh, and and worship's been sounding amazing it sure grow. has been yeah and so yeah so let's get ready guys uh let's jump into it and we'll see you in there
I don't believe it. I don't believe it. 9.30 was louder. Come on, 11.15. This is the rowdy service. Yes, let's go. It's church. There we go. We're so excited that you're here today. My name's Tim, and this is my wife, Jen, and we are going into a brand new series today all about parenting. That being said, if you have come and you've got little ones, Jen's going to let you know what to do with them. Yeah, if you brought your little ones this morning, if you would just go right through these doors over here. We have an amazing kids department that's fun and safe, and your kids are going to love it, um, and they'll get you all checked in. If you guys are new here, we would love to connect with you after the service in the lobby, so please come see us. We have a gift for you, and yeah, we're going to have an awesome day. That being said, guys, we're going to go into a time of worship. And what that is, is just we elevate God above our circumstance. So won't you stand with us this morning? I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what you come in with. But this is the perfect time as a collective community to raise God above all of our circumstances and remind ourselves who is in control. He totally is and he hasn't let go. So let's worship him together. Come on.
great to be here today. And isn't it awesome that we serve a God who cares about us so much. We can call on him for everything. I'm calling on the God of Jacob, whose love endures through generations. That you will keep your covenant. I'm calling on the God of Moses, the one who opened up the ocean. I need you now to do the same thing for me, for me.
said the authority of the name of Jesus causes every knee to bow in reverence everything and everyone will one day submit to this name in the heavenly realm in the earthly realm and in the depths and every tongue will proclaim in every language Jesus Christ is the Lord bringing glory and honor to God his Father. Man, the name of Jesus is such a powerful name. And when we come to pray, we come to call on the name of Jesus. And we're leaning in to his mercy. We're leaning into his grace. And we're leaning in to the only one who has the authority to actually change anything in the universe. And that's pretty crazy when you think about it. And today, I just want to just encourage you because Jesus is the only one who can change the situation you find yourself in. Jesus is the only one who can speak freedom into your life. Jesus is the only one who can speak healing into your life. Jesus is the one in whom we find our hope. And this morning, we're going to pray. We've got some prayer uh, that came in through our prayer cards in the uh, front hallway. And that's a great way to let us know that you need some prayer for something. Also, you can post on our Lethbridge Facebook page for uh, Parallel Church. And we'll get praying right away on that. And we want to just mention some of the requests that we have in this morning. Some of you guys know Mark Checkis is part of our safety team. Um, he was surprised with the diagnosis of cancer a couple of weeks ago. And uh, now they've told him it's stage four cancer. Can I tell you that God is bigger than stage four cancer? And we're believing God for a miracle. We're believing God to touch him and just come alongside Rachel and Maddie as well. We also want to pray for the Bernard family this week as they are marking the anniversary of the loss of their daughter and sister. 
um, who just passed uh, passed away a couple of years ago, and it's a rough time for them. So we really want to pray pray for them. Um, Wendy Jensen said she wants to have no more pain and wants peace. Those are good things to to be asking for. Pat and Linda Cavanaugh wrote me to say that that she has whooping cough and he has COVID right now, and so they're they're having a a, a rough weekend uh, this weekend. Uh, someone said pray for my small business. I need wisdom, health strength in relationships, provision for my family. Another person said, pray for my work situation. There's a lot going on and I need God involved with it. And you know, those are just a touch, just a slice of what's going on because I know each one of you, if you're not going through something, you know someone who's going through something and we're going to bring those to the Father today. We're going to bring those in the mighty name of Jesus and we're going to pray. Amen. Father, we just thank you for the mighty name of Jesus, the name which is above all every name. Lord, we just thank you for the authority which is above every other authority, the authority that is above sickness, that is above uh, addiction, depression, anxiety, uh, confusion, anything that the enemy would try and tangle us with, Lord. And uh, we just thank you, you just come break that with the power and the authority of your name. Lord, we just speak hope and life into people's lives in Jesus' name. Amen. something break that's why we gather it's for moments like that and in what pastor jeremy was saying i just i was thinking about it and i'm i think about sometimes how i say i trust you god and then i recollect on it and i'm just like you know what a lot of times i say i trust god to the point where only if god does something in my favor am i wrong where it's like god if you if you do what i'm waiting for you to do then i trust you And if you don't do what I'm waiting for you to do, then I don't trust you anymore. Let me tell you something. I want to be able to get to the point where where I say I trust God, that it's the kind of trust that that Jonathan's armor bearer had when he looked at Jonathan and said, I'm with you heart and soul, despite the outcome. But despite what we're going through, I'm with you. That kind of trust that that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had before going into the fire, where they say, whether God's in it or not, we we believe he's still God. So I don't know where you're at, but but I want to like go on a journey with you to get to the point where we say we trust God that means despite whether it works in my favor or not he's still God and what he does is still good and he's still faithful and he's still working amen 
Well, welcome to Parallel Church. My name is Tim, this is my beautiful wife, and we get the honor of hosting and speaking to you. Today, you guys can be seated. We are going into a brand new series called Parenting It Takes a Village. We want to say hello to all of our online viewers, wherever you're watching from, whether it be your couch or your campsite. May long weekend, come on. How many of you guys came in from the campsite just for church? Okay, okay. Nobody wants to admit it, right? Because then they're like, oh wait, there's no showers at campsites and I'm sitting next to you. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. There's something incredibly powerful about a community. And when we say it takes a village, that statement comes from an old African proverb where it says it takes a village to raise a child. And as parents in here, or if you were a kid at one point, you can probably look back on your life and be like, there was a lot more people involved in my life that helped get me to where I needed to be that weren't my parents. It was families that came alongside. It was families that decided to enter the sphere of your life and be like, we're gonna help you. We're gonna help you get there. How many of you guys can raise your hand and be like, yeah, I can recognize there was people throughout my life. Yeah. So today, while Jen and I talk about parenting, our hope is that that you would be encouraged, number one, parents that are in the room right now, that you would be reminded that God, out of everybody that God could have chose, He chose you to raise your kids. As flawed and as broken as you may find yourself and frustrated at times is that you're still the person that God chose. And secondly, is that our hope in this series is that we would understand the value of community and that we would see beyond just our house and our neighborhood, but we would be like, man, what is what did God intend for communities and why is it so important? So follow along with us in that. And uh, we want to start off with like a little bit of our story and where we came from and how we got here. Yeah, so 12 years ago, we actually, we moved here from Penticton, BC, which is a little town in the Okanagan. And most people are like, you moved here from Penticton, why did you do that? Um, We were in a different season of our life. We were developing our own vision for our family. We were feeling called to full-time ministry and we were feeling called to explore a new village. Let's put it that way. (laughs) And we we were in a process of prayer and seeking God on it. And we really felt like the season had come for us to move and we decided to move here to Lethbridge, Alberta. We came here on Easter weekend 12 years ago Mm -hmm. with our three-year-old daughter, Madison. Um, It takes a lot to change a village. And if any of you guys have ever moved, you guys know what it is like to experience culture shock. Um, Maybe not, but some of you guys maybe can relate to that. Um, We came from a small community to this community. We were involved in ministry, but our life was changing seasons. And it was just, it was a different time for us, but coming here, the importance of community and the people that brought us into their homes. When we first got here, we were invited to come to Easter dinner at someone's house. People helped us move. People helped us go find like beds off of Kijiji because we came here with a moving truck and like nothing really. And it was the community here that really rooted us in and got us established in this house and in this community and really invested in us in that season to get us to where we are today. Yeah. Yeah, and I came across a really interesting t- statistic. Uh, it says this, in the fourth quarter of 2022, Stats Canada released that only 45% of Canadians feel a strong sense of belonging to their local communities and a significant increase of feelings of isolation in age groups 18 to 29. Well, if you look at that age group, well, that's, that's the young family age group. That's where parenting is just starting out and you're trying to navigate what it's like to be a parent. And um, it's kind of terrifying that being a new parent, that's, in, in our country, that's the age group that is isolated the most. And modern parents don't live in villages because when you look at villages, they used to be a natural way to learn from people and help receive uh, extended families and surrounding communities. And now parents often dive alone into one of the most important, one of the most challenging positions of their life and they have weak access to community and support. And when we look at where we are in life, we all end up in a village somewhere. I'm in a village, you're in a village. And the difference is that we're either in that village by design or by default. Some of us hate our village, but we haven't made any efforts to change it or get out of it. Some of us love our village and we're there because we intentionally decided that that's where we're going. That's what we want our family to be about. So um, I think each village has its own set of challenges and we're just gonna run through a couple of them. The first one being every village has its own style of leadership. 
spiritual leadership. Let's talk about this just in the home sense or a community sense. Spiritual leadership, how you serve one another, how um, teaching our kids to manage their responsibilities, servant leadership, that kind of thing. Every, have, do, you get, do you remember being a kid and going and sleeping over at your friend's house and how messed up that family was? Like, we are the odd ones on the block because our kids, like, we, we like an early bedtime. We're not old, <laughs> but we're not young. And, like, our kids, Nine o'clock our neighbors will be knocking on our door at 7.30 wanting to play with our kids. And they're like, is Grayson going to be able to play? I'm like, he's in bed, dude. <laughs> like, we're shut down. <laughs> um, and I think about just being a kid and remember going to, like, my friends' houses. I, 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 I'd watch their dinner routines and how, like, everyone just uses their hands right in the bowl. And I'm like, you don't have, like, those tongs? <laughs> like, <laughs> or not. Um, and you could probably think of moments like that as well. But every, every home has its own style of leadership. And it was the scariest thing as a kid, having to sleep at night in a home with, like, a different style of leadership than what you're used to. But you look on a broader spectrum of that, every village has its own style of leadership as well. And there was many things that we needed to get accustomed to when we came into this village, into this community. Yeah, I think it's super important for us to own our role in our household. Um, your kids were given to you by design. Yeah and God knew what he was doing. And like the song that we sung for Mother's Day that everyone wept like a million tears about. <laughs> so God knew what he was doing when he like made you the parents in your household. He yeah. specifically designed this and all throughout the Bible you see how God works through families and generations and generation to generation. And it wasn't a mistake that he placed you as a family unit. And I think it's important that in our own in our own walks that we build our own spiritual health as well because you can't have healthy kids without healthy parents yeah. and healthy families come out of that and so when you're looking at the intentionality you're putting into your own spiritual development we just came out of the series the table and learned so many amazing things about what it is to be a spiritual father and there's many times in our life where we've had to look for mentors in different areas of our life we were very intentional coming out of our different backgrounds my family didn't grow up in the church his family very much grew up in the church and we were trying to create a new picture and we didn't really have a good model for what that picture should look like so if you're in a place where you're like i need a healthy picture for my family it might be good to find people that you can put in your circles who can help you develop that picture so you know what it is you're trying to build yeah that's so good that's so good my name's tim what are you doing after church <laughs> stick around you can watch me stack chairs <laughs> these muscles don't grow on their own people <laughs> young adult men in here stack chairs that's how villages begin okay um Side note. <laughs> Side note. It's own vision. Every village has its own vision. I wonder if you can see what is special about your home. Or if you've gotten to the point where you're so familiar with your schedule and the routine that you just, you walk in, you eat, you sleep, you walk out, and you've missed the beautiful uniqueness of your home. Every home has its own smell. Some good, some not great. But what is, what is special about your home? Parents... Even kids in the room, I'm asking you, what, can you see what is special about your household? The way that you talk to one another. I, I, I have friends, I've been to their houses, and I watch the communication that happens in that home, and I'm like, I can tell they're intentional about how they talk to each other, or they're unintentional about how they talk to each other. So I wonder if you could see the vision of your family. Yeah, and it's kind of like at Christmas time. I don't know if you guys are like us, like it's the one time a year maybe that we pull out a puzzle. Um, maybe more than that, but usually it's at Christmas time. We have our Christmas puzzles that we do as a family. And usually mom and dad's job is to build the borders. We build the framework. We do groupings of puzzle pieces. So like you're building the dog over here and someone else is like building the presents. But the kids aren't really great necessarily of discovering those groupings or building the framework so mom and dad's job is usually to build the framework but just like how mom and dad would usually build the framework your kids are going to have to take those pieces and build their life and so when you're developing a vision for your house it helps one having a picture and then two it's our job to help build the structure and the framework to help them be successful and they may not necessarily attribute it to that later on in life but there's things that you pick up there's things you pick up from your families and your parents and those values that you develop in your household are going to end up being like being the culture of your home so those things are so important that you're intentionally building out those pieces and putting it together 
Absolutely. So we've gone over leadership. Your house has its own vision, its own values. And finally, it has its own systems. We've uh, incorporated what we've been talking about in the last series with Rhythms of Grace and the whole Tech Sabbath thing, and it is hard. <laughs> it's a hard thing to do. But we've tried it the last month, and we have seen so much fruit, so much fruit out of it in the sense that like, I'm telling myself, don't you dare pick up that phone. You have to model this, yep. or they're not going to. Like, don't you dare. And they hide it in the drawer where you lock it and just mm -hmm. go ahead. But in watching and bringing the kids alonging that is we're seeing a whole, a whole bunch more fruit in their relationship, in the time spent together. You heard a statistic recently that was a little scary as well. Yeah, in recent statistics, it was saying that um, parents spend less than five hours a week face-to-face -face with their kids. So five hours a week is not a lot of time when you're trying to intentionally invest in and grow your children and create these value systems and help them develop into the people that God's calling them to be. So we have to be super intentional about that. We have to be intentional with our calendars. Like I'll be the first one to admit that I have like time management problems. <laughs> There's only 24 hours in a day and like I'm gonna try to use them. And I say like, I really like, I love the verse where it's God like stand, or the sun stands still. Cause that's how I, I feel about my day to day life a lot of the time. And a lot of the time the calendar really does run your world but you have to be intentional about making sure that when you're carving out time as a family if you say that one of your values as a family is to spend time together it does need to show up in the calendar um, i used to not be a calendar person and i don't know if that was better or worse but i do remember that you would you would believe a certain thing so i would believe that we were being intentional about our family time i would believe that we were being intentional about date night yeah. i would believe that we're intentional about taking our kids out on those daddy daughter dates or mom son dates but ultimately it would be a month that would go by where we didn't actually do that and in my mind i'm still believing that that's happening <laughs> So you need, the proof is actually in the calendar and numbers don't lie. So if you can go through your calendar and articulate where you want to spend that time and that your values and your time are reflected in your calendar, you're going to set yourself up for success. Yeah, I would even go to say, if it's not on the calendar, it's not important. Exactly, yeah. Like it's not a priority. It doesn't mean that sometimes it gets missed or it doesn't happen, but like being aware of it and bringing awareness to the fact that you're trying to be protective of that and being diligent to cut out those things that aren't in alignment with it. Maybe you're finding that you have some friends or people in your village who are taking up a lot of time. Maybe they're coming over, maybe they're coming for coffee, but it's not even a fruitful conversation sometimes. And that's actually taking times away from the things that you value the most. So sometimes you have to be ruthless. Sometimes you have to define who it is that is in your village yeah. and be very aware of who it is that you're letting into those spaces in your life. Talking about that, we've recognized that. I, I think it would be beneficial, you can take this as you will, but I think it's beneficial for everybody to have three main people in your village. And that first person, I would say, is a pastor. Not because you can't develop your faith on your own, but faith and believing your entire life in something that you can't see takes other people coming alongside you to be like, I see that in you. I see that for you. Mm -hmm. um, this is like, and, and bringing scripture into a very open space for you to be able to come alongside people. Like, I don't know where we would be, honestly, without the pastors in our lives. True, yeah. And I look back on where, where we were before we decided that those were important people to put in our sphere. And it kind of scares me to that point. We just need someone. You look at anybody influential, um, like throughout scripture, they always had somebody above them that was leading them, guiding them, speaking into them, speaking for them in, in certain situations. Guys, um, don't ever underestimate the value of having spiritual oversight in your home or in your life. Yeah, and we were very fortunate. So pastors Joylin and Kelly spent a lot, we spent years with them and as a family. We've gone on vacations together. We've been very close and we've been able to see how they have parent and modeled it well. And there's been so many things that we've been able to learn from them in that process that we didn't have modeled in our own homes. And so it does take that other mother and father to come alongside sometimes and be like, this is how it can be, and this can work, and it can be honoring, yeah. and it can be exciting, and you can go to bed at nine o'clock, and that's okay. <laughs> In that, you need someone to watch over your soul. What's your soul, yeah. your mind, your will, your emotions? So having that person in your life, it's like when Jesus came and saw the crowds, and he said they were like sheep without a shepherd, 
It's the exact same thing. It's just having that, that person is just like, like help, help me wisely shepherd my, my soul, my mind, my will, my emotions. Uh, the second person we need, I think, is a mentor. Somebody who we, number one, respect. Number two, um, can hold us accountable for the goals that we're after in our life. Going after a goal alone is really difficult really difficult and at the first sign of it not working you'll back out and you'll you'll go walk away because it's easier to quit than it is to pursue so find somebody who's gone further than you in an area that you want to develop and bring them into your sphere and be like hey would you just mentor me for a little bit because i need someone to hold me accountable to this and then third person we all need is a friend what i love about parallel church is that we are not just a friendly church we are a church where people make friends this is a community where relationships are spurring up every single Sunday and then it's, it's expanding out and we're becoming a support system for each other. Guys, that's what a village is. Different stages of life often require different stages for life. So taking Jesus as an example, as a child, he had a neighborhood in Nazareth, but as an adult, it looked very much different for him. He needed to leave. He needed to get out and discover the greater things that God had for him. In Matthew 13, we see... Um, when Jesus was back in Nazareth and as an adult, it says, how is this possible? The people exclaimed. He's just a carpenter's son. And we know Mary, his mother, and his brothers, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas, and his sisters, they all live here. How can he be so great? And they became angry with him. Then Jesus told them, a prophet is honored everywhere except his own country and among his own people. And so he did only a few great miracles there because of their unbelief. And when I think back on mine and Jen's life and where we grew up in that community, like we go back and visit it for vacation every now and then, but it is not a place I want to stay. I, 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 there's just something different about getting outside the familiarity of where you were developed and getting it into a new arena to allow that skill to, yeah. to blossom. Yeah. And the challenge with that is also, like this is the other importance about having a mentor, someone to bounce these things off of, because you, if you uproot yourself too early or too soon, you and, could rob yourself of yeah. some learning opportunities that God has for you. Not everything that we're in that's difficult is because of um, like a toxic environment and those things. There are things that God's developing in your character and there's things that like you do need to walk through and it's painful sometimes and challenging. But if you uproot yourself too soon in that process, then it could be a detriment to your to your spiritual health, to your maturity levels, to the things that God's trying to work out through your system. But I do think one of the things, even just bouncing back to the friend, the friend thing, is that John Maxwell says that you're going to end up like the five people you hang around with, right? And we have a teenager. Friends are really important. Yeah. The people that you hang around and the people that matter and are in those close circles really do make a difference. So making sure that you do bring people into that space that one should be there. We talked about boundaries a few series back. Just make sure that the people that are there that are healthy and are going to help you grow into the person that you want to become. If you're looking around you and you don't want to be like the five people closest to you, it might be a good time to be like, we maybe need to look at our village and make some adjustments. Yeah. But even talking about, so the Matthew verse and going back to your hometown, a lot of people can physically not be in their hometown, but mentally and emotionally are still trapped in their hometown. That's good. Those words that were spoken over you as a child, if there was things that were in your environment that were negative, or maybe you're still carrying on with those things, those things leak into your parenting. So there's things that if someone's ever like, I don't know if I, there might be people in here who this is a compliment, but for most people, it's like, you don't want to turn out like your parents. And it's like, oh, you sound just like your mom or, oh, you sound just like your dad. And I think it's some of those, sometimes that's a great thing. And in other times that makes you like, like that stings when someone says that to you because there's things in, in their parenting that you didn't like. Yeah. And there's things that you, don't, you wouldn't want to replicate into your, own, into your own kids and into your own home. So being super intentional about even though you might not be physically in your hometown, mentally and emotionally, there might be things that are, are still in that place. I find it absolutely interesting that like we moved to Lethbridge and we didn't know what was waiting here or what could be developed here. But there are people that have lived their entire lives in this city and look at it and they're like, there's no hope for this town. It's come true, on. Though. We still hear that. We still hear that. Mm -hmm. And we come in, we're just like, there's, there's hope. <laughs> like, let's, let's turn it around. But you get so familiar with your environment that you stop being able to contribute and be like, you've canceled it out of being able to progress in your own mind. So for us coming in here, it's like, oh my gosh, like, let's, let's go. Let's go, church, church. Anyways.
Maybe you don't have a healthy village and it's toxic and maybe you're so familiar with your village that you can't see the miracles that God is doing right now. You come to church your entire life, but you can't see the miracles that he's working in family, in family, in ministry, in department, through my city care, whatever it may be. Like you're just so inundated with familiarity that nothing new can shock you anymore. And people, we say this all the time, but people can be in our circle, but not everybody has to be in your inner circle. So you're in my sphere, but I'm, I'm gonna set like an access point of how far you can come in because once you pass that line, you're starting to affect. <laughs> and people are only in your life at the level that you give them access to. And I, church, I believe that God is sending, I don't know who this is for, I believe that God is sending people in. He's knocking at your door, but you're not willing to let them in and evict the people that have overstayed their welcome in your life. There is God, there is people that God is sending, like sitting around you, probably in this church, that God is lining up to be your next stage for your family to help and support you, but you're not getting rid of the negativity that's brought you to where you are. I don't know who that's for. Paul states in 1 Corinthians 15, 33, that bad company corrupts good character. So a proximity to toxicity is going to equal collateral damage. And what we recognize as parents, it's funny because we will set all the restrictions online of what our kids can and cannot watch, but then we'll let somebody walk right through our front door and sit at our kitchen table that's toxic and not, a, not realize that it's affecting our kids in the way. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> oh, man. I think one of the things that we've learned the most is a refinement of the culture of the home that we want to create. Yeah. And so we've learned a lot of tools over the years. We've learned that our vision for our family is unique. Your vision for your family is going to be unique. Maybe you're a sports family. Maybe your values are in the arts or in music or all sorts of different things, right? Like it's going to be different for each of you in developing that, but how you live out of that is so important. How you raise your kids, the intentionality put into them. Like we still pray over our kids at bedtime. We like are very intentional about creating moments in those day-to-day -day activities. So on the drive to and from school, um, how we can do the best job that we can in the short time that we have, because it is true, the days are long and the seasons are short. You only have a certain amount of time where they're with you, face to face with you. And ultimately, everyone's always asking the question of like, how do you know if you get it right? And that's only gonna be able to be answered when you have a clear vision for your family. Um, Andy Stanley in his book on parenting was talking about you begin with the end in mind. Yeah. So for us and for them, we want to create a home that kids are going to want to come back to when they're an adult. They want to come back and visit. They have motivation to come back and visit. And I think one of the things that we've been very conscientious of is what we allow, because culture is what you allow, but it's also like the intentionality that goes into those little pieces that make up your day yeah. and the little pieces that make up your year and those little pieces that make up uh, the people that they're becoming and how we steward steward that well. Yeah, and in order to have effect, like effective villages, we need effective citizens. And let's have a hard look at what we're investing into our kids so that they are contributing citizens to the community that we're trying to build. Like what Jen was just saying there, like we, your family values may be different. You may be a sports family. For us, we don't have a trophy case of awards for our kids, and it's not because that's not what, what we don't value. It's just our family values are we want our kids to know what it means to serve in their community and be contributing members. And so our, our, we have a photo book full of our family serving together instead of like a trophy case full of awards, which isn't wrong or right. It's just different values. I love this quote by C.S. Lewis. He says, children are not a distraction from the important work. They are the most important work. And what's happening with your kids in that room right next over there, that is not babysitting. That is preparing the next church. The church, actually. For, and if that doesn't work in there, it's not going to work in here because we're developing them to be able to get to this stage and then go out and serve their communities. Like, they are the most important work. I heard someone say this, it's not what we leave to our kids that makes them great, it's what we leave in our kids that makes them great. So I've heard, like we have friends who are, who are very well off and they're like, oh, I'm just like, got that, I don't know, whatever. They're investing materialistic things and waiting like to give their kids materialistic things, which I don't think is wrong, but we can't underestimate the value of what it means to impart the right things into our kids. So it's not what we leave to them, it's what we live in them. So if we focus too much on what we leave to them, 
We're going to send them out into the world. They're going to run through the resources and not know how to navigate life or their faith. If we leave more in them than what we leave to them, we can be confident that out in the world, they're going to know their faith, they're going to know who they are, and they're going to know what they're capable of. And they're going to be able to act on that. And act on that. Yeah. yeah. In Acts 2.45, it says, And they began selling their property and possessions and were sharing them with all as anyone would have a need. I love our vision here at Parallel Church. Yeah. We get to come alongside our community in so many amazing ways. We were designed for relationships. When you go out into the lobby, we have a big banner in the lobby that says that we're building authentic relationships. And that's one of our core values, not just in our house at home, but in our house as the church. And that's something that we constantly are living out. Like you guys on the day-to-day -day basis are impacting thousands of lives, not even hundreds of lives, thousands yeah. of lives in the communities that we're a part of. And even beyond that, we're serving, I don't even, I don't even have the current number of how many communities, I think it's like 62 uh, communities that we're serving right now through the work and the values and the passion and the vision that comes out of this house. Yeah. And so when we're looking at the intentionality of building a village, you guys are a part of an amazing village and I couldn't be prouder. I'm like, I'm so excited about the vision of where Parallel Churches is and is going and what we're creating. And I think one of the things is you might, you might not know necessarily who your village is. You might be developing it. You might be moving from it. You might be coming to a new village, but you're in a process that God's taking you through. And just be aware and allow yourself to go through the process of if God's ministering to you about something, maybe you do need a mentor. Maybe you do need to make some new friends. Maybe you do need to make some adjustments in your time to help you parent more effectively or to utilize your time more effectively, but make sure that one, your values are in alignment with that, and two, it shows up on your calendar, because that's super important, and then three, develop and work to continually refine and develop the vision for your family and your house. And I think you'll probably find that a lot of those values are connected to even just what you see here, right? You're, we're about building relationships and community, and you need to be in community. That's why we do connect groups. It's so important to be around people that have similar values. And I think when our kids grow up and they get out of youth group, we want them to connect to a local church. It yep. may not be this church, it could be any church, but when they go to university somewhere, you want them to be like, this was so, this provided so much value in our life Support. that we yeah. need to have this wherever we go. And those are the things that are gonna stick in the long run. Would you guys be willing to give up what you know for what God sees for your family? Would you have the courage to off-ramp the people or systems that are hindering your family in order to onboard who you need for your next phase of life? Imagine for a moment what we could do as a community or a village if we came to each other and said, how can I be a part of your village? I know, it's a daring question. And it's kind of invasive, I get it. But what if our conversations were less about, man, the weather's really nice today, absolutely is. And we were out on the patio after church and we're searching because we have either have resources or we're open to a change in our life. And we're having conversations about how can I be a part of your village? How can I support your family? How can I come alongside your kids? How can I be a part of your village? Because if church is superficial, we're gonna get the least amount out of it. But man, if we go deep with our relationships, guys, if we invest in that time with one another, like that's where the power of the community really is. What if we were as parallel church not known for our engaging services, but we were most known for how we engage in service to one another. It's like, man, that church over there, that church over there, they, they had a family that was in need. They had a family that lost their house in a fire and that whole church came together and went over and replaced everything they lost in that house except for the stuff that couldn't be replaced. What if, our, what if we were known for the church that just came together when there was a need? You know what? I get excited about this. <laughs> so in Psalm 133, David writes about how the dew of Haran fell on Mount Zion. And it's, like when you look at those two mountains, they are completely in different opposite areas. Like they're not, they can, they're not even connected to each other. But what David is talking about, the impossibility of God, or the, the possibility of God doing impossible things. So just because the dew fell in Haran, it landed on Zion. Like God is the God of the impossible. And when we collectively come together as one unit, 
and the, like the faith and the resources, guys, that is the church and the impossible is not impossible anymore. So I'm going to get excited about that. This is, which tells, which, which means that if you're sitting in here today and you're like, I don't know if I'm a part of this village. I don't know if I fit into this village. Let me just tell you that you're sitting in a collective of people that can help make a way where right now you may not see there is a way. Come on. Our takeaway today is that strong communities take strong families, and strong families take strong communities. So if we're going to be a strong community, man, we need to, we got to hit home. It starts in our homes. Can you see what's special about your home? And then can you build on that? And I remind you that when you're raising kids, you are not just raising children. You are raising future parents. You are raising future grandparents that are sowing into the lineage of your family. And when you look throughout scripture, like we hear about Joseph, we hear about David, we hear about these Rembrandts that God selected out of their families to carry the faith forward, to do incredible things. You may be sitting here to be like, I come from a family of misfits. Like we don't, we don't even belong near church. Let me tell you that God is saving Rembrandts in this room right now for the future of the church. You may not recognize it right now. You may be sitting here. This is your fourth service. And can I encourage you to keep coming because God wants to do something significantly through families. And I just get excited of the fact that there's somebody sitting in this congregation right now who could be the future church leader of tomorrow. And the only way we discover that, guys, is through relationship. Engage, share with one another, talk with one another. Let's not be a superficial community because there's so much gold under the relationship that can be built here. Don't walk out without a number. Don't walk out without a name. This is church. Amen. If you're a parent in here and you've been hitting your head against the wall, you're like, I don't understand this breed of generation that I'm trying to raise. I don't understand what I'm doing as a parent. Can I just, can I just say that none of us have it all together? Number one. But number two is that you're not alone in this. And it starts with understanding that you're a child of God, that you are valued, that you have above and beyond everything that you need to do the job that God's asked you to do. And with that, if you're in this room right now and you don't have a relationship like with God, it just, it starts there. How can you model faith if you don't even, if you don't even believe it yourself for your kids? Or if you're about to be a parent and you know you want to have kids, man, today's a really great start to start a relationship with God. The church is the hope of the world. It really is. And if you're in this room right now, would you just pray with me as I pray for all the parents in here right now? God, we just thank you so much that you are saving Rembrandts from family, God. We thank you that you are using prayers from people long ago to protect and shelter the ones that you're bringing up in the faith, God, for the church to move forward. I pray for every parent in this room right now that you would give them the, the wisdom to know what to do and the courage to do it. I thank you, God, that you're giving them the boldness to lead their family spiritually, relationally, developing creative ideas so that the culture of the home is a place where kids can not just survive, but thrive. We thank you, God. That family was your idea, community was your idea. God, let us be effective at it in Jesus' name. Amen. Paul says in Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that he rose again from the dead, you will be saved. So I want to run through a prayer with you all right now that does exactly that. And it's not joining a church. It's not joining religion. This is simply just a relationship with God. So I'd encourage you all, close your eyes, bow your head, repeat this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, I confess that you are God and I believe that you rose again from the dead and I ask you now to become my Lord 
to become my savior, to become my friend. I thank you that my past is past and that I can begin anew with you today. My heart is yours. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. So if you prayed this prayer for the first time, first off, congratulations. This is an amazing, amazing step in a new journey. Second off, there is a link that will be posted in the comment section on Facebook there. Click on that link, fill out that form. This is a way for us to just be able to know that you said this prayer for the first time and that you accepted Jesus into your heart today as well. A way for us to remain in contact with you if you have any questions, if you have any concerns. We'd love to just be able to be there for you and help you out uh, with anything that, that you might uh, need help with, uh, especially on this new journey here. And uh, again, congratulations on that amazing, amazing decision. But guys, what an amazing message here we hope you enjoyed it loved having pastor jen and pastor tim on the stage uh talking about parenting i hope you guys got something from it definitely make sure you're getting your notepads out right because this series is going to keep getting keep getting good keep getting uh super helpful so i'd encourage you guys make sure you guys got your notepads ready make sure that you are prepared to be taking notes uh, and i'm sure you have a ton of notes from today but what i wanted to talk to you guys today about was in second corinthians 9 verses 10 to 11 which says now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You'll be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. So you will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. Right? I love this. God is going to provide for you so that you can provide for others. When you get blessings, they're not just for you, right? They're there to be blessings to others as well so this week let's go out let's be intentional about uh, of the blessings that we receive let's bless others with those blessings right and part of how you can do this is through places like uh, my city care and not for sale and so if you donate there is a, a link that's been posted in the comment section i can see it up now click on that link fill out that form it's a secure way to be able to give Part of what you're giving today goes to is places like My City Care and Not For Sale that helps those who are hurting, who are broken, and who are lost. And so I'd encourage you guys, let's bless others with the blessings that God's given us, uh, and let's pray. Dear God, I thank you so much for each and everyone joining in with us today. I thank you for the amazing people that they are. I pray that, uh, that they would be able to use their blessings to bless others this week and uh, for the rest of their lives. And I, God, I'd encourage uh, each and every one who's joining in with us today uh, just to yeah just to share their blessings with others and uh, and i pray that you just continue to bless each and everyone as well joining in with us today uh, in jesus name we pray amen amen all right guys here at parallel church we have five next steps attend connect give love and invite and today i want to focus in on inviting this is an amazing series to be able to invite people to even if you're not a parent, right? Even if you're just dealing with kids, any anything of that sort, this is a great way for us to be able to encourage and grow and, and develop the next generation. So I'd encourage you guys, uh, invite a friend, find a family member, a coworker, or a friend that you can invite out. They don't even have to leave their house, right? They can watch this all online. So I'd encourage you guys, find someone to invite uh, as well. You can always hit the share button too, and that's a great way to, to have some friends join. But besides that, guys, Thank you so much for joining in. We hope you enjoyed this series or this, this service. Uh, we'll continue the series uh, next week and we'll see you all there. Have a good one.